In this problem, we are being asked to walk through the steps that will prove the law of cosines. And you probably remember, maybe, the law of cosines. Uh, one version of it would be c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. And we can use this to solve for angles and sides in triangles. So this is what we want to end up with when we get to the end of our proof. And we're starting with this triangle. So we've got a, a, a triangle that's been broken up into two right triangles by dropping this altitude here. The first step here, has, here says use the Pythagorean theorem to find c squared. Well, where is side c? That's this side right here. That's the hypotenuse of this little right triangle. So c squared would just be these other two sides. One side is h. So that's going to be part of, well, h squared then. So c squared equals the other two sides squared. So that's one of them. And then the other one is this length right here. And we have this whole length, that's b, and this part, which is x. So what remains here is um, going to be b minus x. So we'll have to write this as b minus x squared. Oops, quantity squared. So there's one side, there's the other side, they're squared. So that's what c squared equals. So let's see, which one is that? Looks like um, this one right here. c squared equals b minus x quantity squared plus h squared. OK, let's try part two here. It says use the answer from part one to fill in the blanks. And they've got c squared and x squared and h squared and something else squared and negative 2 times something else. So this step might be confusing. What they're asking you to do here is just multiply out this part and rewrite it. So we're just going to square b minus x. So b minus x squared is b minus x times b minus x. And we can FOIL those out to do the multiplication. That is, we can multiply the first terms. So b times b is b squared. The outside terms, that's negative x times b, so minus xb. The inside terms, that's another minus xb. And the last terms, a negative x times a negative x is a positive x squared. So looks like we've got the x squared already. The h squared is coming from up here, so that's already. And then, so we've got this taken care of. We just need to fill in these parts. So the squared part is b squared. And if we combine our like terms, a negative xb and a negative xb is a negative 2xb. And they've got the 2 here for us already, so we just fill in xb. So that step was just foiling this part out and plugging it back in in this order. All right, let's go on to part three. This says use the Pythagorean theorem to find a squared. So let's look back at the diagram again. Here's a. And if we look at this right triangle, um, a is the hypotenuse. So a squared is going to equal the other two sides squared. So h, again, is one of them. And the other one is x here. So h squared plus x squared. Let's see if we got that. Oh, yeah, right here, just in the other order, x squared plus h squared. All right, and part four says use the answers from two and three to fill in these blanks. C squared equals something squared plus something squared minus two something something. Hmm. So I think what's going on here is we're getting a little substitution. Since we checked this one, we know that a squared equals x squared plus h squared. And if we look up here, we've got an x squared plus h squared. So I think what happens is the a squared goes in to fill in for that right there. So let's go ahead and write that. I'm just going to increase this a little bit so it's easier to see. So a squared, and then we've got b squared, and then 2xb. All right. Step five says use trigonometry to fill in the blank. x equals something times the cosine of c. Well, let's look at angle c. What would the cosine of C be? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it would be x over a. So the cosine of C equals x over a. And then it looks like they just solved that for x by multiplying both sides by a. 
So here they would cancel, and I would get x equals a times the cosine of c. So what we fill in here is just a. And then I think in the last step, what we're going to do is take this and use it to replace the x. Because what we really want to end up with in the law of cosines is all the a's and b's and c's. So here we have x equals a times the cosine of c, and that's what we're going to fill in uh, at the end here. So let's go back. So we, we still have a squared, and we still have b squared, and we have negative 2 times something times something. Well, there's the b that stays, and the x gets replaced by a, cos, and then uh, we have our cosine c, a cosine c. So those are the steps uh, that take you through a proof of the law of cosines.